How to build a Blackgate Sweet Pea 5 inch gauge locomotive part 16. Drilling the replacement port face plates, fitting them in place and marking the positions where the new slide valve ports will be. Filling the damaged areas of the original port face with JB Weld high temperature epoxy putty. If you are following this series about how to build a Blackgate Sweet Pea locomotive, you will wonder why didn't I build one from scratch? The answer is simple, there are two reasons. I wanted to avoid all the routine things like drilling the frames, machining the cylinders, and besides a while ago I made a video about machining a cylinder, and the process is identical for all cylinders really. Using a part finished locomotive is good because I can repair the parts that are not right, and this makes for a more interesting video series. In a previous episode I cut these two metal plates, these are going to fit over the existing damage ports. By holding the steam chest cover over the top of the plate and using my scriber I can mark the positions where I need to drill the holes to sandwich this between the steam chest and the port face. I coated one side of the steel plates in marking out blue and here I'm applying some Loctite 603 to the underside. The logic being that if I stick these two plates together then they cannot move during the drilling process so the hole positions in both of the plates will be identical. This particular bottle of Loctite 603 is quite old and I don't think it's as good as it should be but it will do the job that I want it to do. To release the two plates after I've finished the drilling operation all I need to do is heat them up with a blowtorch. Here are the scribe marks when I need to drill the holes. It would have been easier and safer to also stick the steam chest cover to these metal plates. Then the holes in the steam chest cover would act as drill guides, but I like to live dangerously. It's quite cool in the workshop today so I'm just warming up the plate slightly with the blowtorch. I'm not doing this for very long because I don't want the plate to be hot. This clip shows the marks transferred from the steam chest cover to the plates, and they are not all exactly the same so I'm going to fight the urge to correct the holes as I drill them. Later on in this episode I will show how I tackle the port face, and depending on how well the method I'm going to use for filling these holes works, depends on whether I fit the plates before I assemble the cylinders, or retrofit them once they've been fitted, if the filling doesn't work. What I'm doing here is checking the size of the holes, the drill bit on the right is 5 30 seconds of an inch, the one on the left is one imperial size larger. You have to be very careful when drilling holes like this. I'm trying my best to get the drill in the right place, but it's wobbling about. Time to take it to the drill doctor, this is an excellent machine. It is of course used for sharpening drills. First of all you position the drill in the chuck, but before tightening it, you make sure that the clamps hold the drill in the right place. Then you press the button to release the clamps and withdraw the chuck and put it in the hole at the other end. This special mechanism means as you rotate it, it oscillates from side to side across a diamond grinding wheel. This gives a perfect finish to the drill bit and the angles of course are also perfect. I strongly recommend buying one of these Drill Doctor machines. It just works and makes sharpening drills a very pleasurable and quick process. I used to sharpen twist drills completely by eye. I was taught by a man called Roy Haynes many years ago. Pardon the expression, but it's all in the wrist action. But you do need to practice to make sure the angles are correct at both sides. The Drill Doctor is a much better option. Before I bought the Drill Doctor, I had a twist drill grinder that I bought from the centre aisle of a supermarket, and it was so bad I threw it in the bin. Over now to the drilling machine and the colours and focus are not what they should be. I was concentrating on actually doing the job rather than making the video. What I'm doing here is using a centre drill to accurately spot the marks on the plates. One hole drilled in the wrong place means the parts are scrap and I really don't want to do it again. The holes are not perfectly in line, but that's because they've been marked from an existing part. I really am fighting the urge to correct the positions of the holes, but if I do that, the part won't fit. 
The good thing about using a centre drill is if you start it off in the wrong place you can move it before pushing it into the work. After centre drilling all of the holes I went through them using a twist drill. This twist drill is just slightly above the diameter of the holes in the steam chest. I'm not that confident that it's going to be perfect but it should be somewhere near to say the least. The heat from the drilling operation separated the two plates so I didn't have to heat them up with a blowtorch. Mainly because, as I mentioned earlier, the Loctite 603 that I used was very old and past its sell-by date. The good news is, all the studs fit in the hole, and as you can see, the holes are slightly larger than the studs, but that is fine, I never wanted them to be tight. If the filling the port face idea is not successful, I will be using these plates after I've milled the ports and I will be physically sticking the metal plate onto the top of the cylinder using JB Weld. I could use a gasket, but there's less chance of JB Weld blowing when it's in service. I suppose I could use high temperature silicone, that would also work, but I'm not a big fan of silicone rubber sealant for live steam applications. The first test fit is encouraging, this is the right hand cylinder, and now what I'm doing is marking R on the plate inside, and then drawing around it so I know where the ports need to be. I do have the complete set of drawings in the book that I bought, but I think I prefer to work from the parts I've already got rather than following the drawing and then finding out that they're in the wrong place. The good news is both of the plates fit both of the cylinders, so this job is completed. As I've already mentioned, I drew around the inside of the steam chest to make a mark on the plates so I know where to mill the ports. This is just a clearer image. Before I fit these plates though, I am going to have a go at repairing the existing ports using some JB Weld high temperature epoxy putty. To apply this, I need to remove every one of the studs. These are the original studs, the ones I'll be using are the ones I've just bought, a new set. One of the cylinders isn't so bad, but this is not the good one. Someone has clumsily taken a chunk out of the port face with a milling cutter, and then the milling cutter has slipped when machining the central port. I can't really apply the JB weld to the port face where it's damaged with the cutter, because it's just going to flake off. What I'm doing is drilling a hole down into the casting. First of all, with a small 3 16ths of an inch diameter drill, followed by using a 5 16ths of an inch diameter drill to make a hole in the casting, which I'll be able to fill with JB Weld Epoxy Putty. I'm not drilling the hole too deep, just deep enough to anchor the epoxy putty in place. According to what it says on the pack, this stuff should be perfect for the job, continuous heat up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 232 degrees centigrade, and these cylinders are just not going to get that hot. According to a chart that I looked at online, live steam at 100 psi is around 337 degrees C. According to the specifications, this JB Weld epoxy putty should be perfect for the job. In the past I've used milliput for jobs like this and that's also been successful. And I've even filled blowholes in the bore of cylinders that are made from cast iron. And in all cases it's been successful. The starting point though is to make sure that the metal that you're going to bond to is really clean. So here I'm using a drum sander to clean up the exhaust port. Followed by my airline to blow away all the dust. And now the two-pack epoxy putty from JB Weld should bond perfectly to these parts. Unlike Milliput, the JB Weld version isn't a two-pack with two sticks. The two parts are wrapped around each other and need mixing thoroughly. The instructions do tell you to wear gloves when doing this, but I never wear gloves in the workshop. I like to know where my fingers are at all times. Although I do have to say that you should follow the manufacturer's instructions to the letter. I used a generous amount of this stuff and the port face is more than filled. To smooth it out and stop it dragging I used some water. 
I'm going to wait until this is fully hardened after at least 24 hours before I grind it down so that the port face is perfectly flat. And finally, a health and safety warning. After coming into contact with chemicals in the workshop, wash your hands thoroughly afterwards to remove all traces. This clip was shot in 2010 because I used to wash my hands then as well. It's taken from one of my How to Build a Model Steam Launch videos. That is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.